So after 10 episodes and a bunch of specials, this is the finale of our 7 week trip to Kruger and we're leaving with a bang. From walking far too close to a big buffalo herd, to a beautiful male leopard, some Ellie's showing off and something really different and special in camp in Skakuza, we eventually make our way back up north. Welcome to Kruger Park. We took my mom and my sister on a walk in Bergendal on our last day. Okay, so right, this is the area where we are going to walk today. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Willy, my colleague's name is uh, Peter. Peter is the head guide uh, for um, Bergendal. I will walk in front, followed by Peter, and then the rest of you in uh, single file. Please stay close together and very quiet. As we walk, we have to listen to branches breaking, oxpeckers, which uh, are usually an indication of animals in the area. Your safety is uh, very important to us. As I said, any questions that you have, don't feel that, oh, now I'm going to waste their time, I'm not going to ask a question about this or this. We focus on those things that you can't experience from the inside of a car, like the spoor, bugs, trees, flowers, insects, birds. So that is the purpose of, of a walk. Then if it happens that there is a charge, that an animal decides to uh, have a closer look at us, the most important thing not to run away. Stay behind us as a group. Uh, please adhere to our instructions immediately. Uh, very important. Okay, let's go out and enjoy. They cannot be able to di direct digest the grass. What they do, they just collect the pieces of grass and seeds, store it underneath, then your fungus will start growing and after fungus digest it for them, they will eat. So we call the termites fungi farmers. They're woodpeckers. But they are different species, but they look very similar. Very difficult to tell the difference, but very well developed for their job. The beak will grow continuously to compensate for that uh, keratin that flakes away uh, while they pick. Uh, also very broad base, you know, the, the bull to act as a shock absorber. The brain is cushioned within the skull. Uh, very well developed uh, neck muscles, well developed tail feathers to act as a tripod. Feet zygodactylus, meaning two toes facing forward and two backwards uh, for good grip, and a very long tongue that can extend well beyond the mouth. The tongue has also got barbs to um, facilitate, you know, catching of uh, insects inside those small holes and so on. So yeah, very very well developed for that for that job. See those bottles. It's quite some distance, but yeah, we are heading in that direction now. Flannel wheat. As far as the medicinal uses are concerned, the same alkaloids as the ephedra plant that you find in the Middle East. Uh, this one is much milder. The same effects as any uh, ephedra containing plants. In other words, they can use this one for mood enhancing, uh, incre increasing focus, suppressing the effects of alcohol. A lot of medicinal uses for the cedar cordifolia. to have a snack and there's a herd of buffalo that are busy closing in on us. They're quite curious about us and the rangers are pretty chilled so I guess we just got to trust their judgment. <laughs> but yeah there's a big herd of buffalo busy closing in right behind us here. It's pretty cool.
Mm. Right, the same rules still apply. We're uh, walking back to the vehicles now. And the big herd of buffalo between us and the vehicles? Yeah, we also that out. <laughs> <laughs> The buffalo got within about 10 meters of us before he eventually moved off. I'm loving this, it's so wonderful, it's such a privilege to be in the bush. Wonderful. Yeah, loving these bushwalks in Kruger, it's really, really special. Yeah, he's there, you can see. Golden brown baboon spider, uh, the female. Yeah, so this one. This one is quite cooperative, uh, Peter. No? Yeah, it is. Huh? Very nice. Huh? Yeah. It says that there is um, resembles the the uh, fingers of a baboon. As you can see, from time to time, he will attack it as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get left behind. <laughs> so, another amazing walk. Uh, temperature's ridiculous. It's not even 8 o'clock yet and it's probably 35 degrees, so it's really hot this time of year. Um, but it's worth it. We've had an incredible walk. Buffalo so close, it was ridiculous. Um, saw a boon spider, which was very, very cool. He actually, he like coasted out of its nest, which is very cool. But uh, yeah, amazing walk. We're gonna head back to camp, have a swim, which is much needed, and then we'll go on a game drive again later today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We got so lucky on the way home and bumped into this beautiful tom leopard. We skipped the worst of the heats of the day back in camp and then headed out that afternoon for our last game drive in Bergendale. Quietly watching a big breeding herd of Ellie's slowly moving along and feeding is one of the most therapeutic experiences in the bush.
Excuse me. <laughs> what are you doing at my desk? <laughs> so this little cutie has been visiting our camp every day. He probably loves here when we're not camping here. And we're busy packing up and he came to say goodbye. It's a beautiful little pushback ram. Is he getting packed up? Been a beautiful campsite. Absolutely amazing spot in Bergendal. Had a great time here. So all done. That's the that's the last campsite of the trip. Um, we're still going to stay in the park for a little bit. We're going to go to Shikakusa for two nights. And then up to Orpen, then Olifan and Shingwidzi, then out of the park, back up a ride in the north, back where we started, back in Perfuri. We're going to spend the Christmas festive season with friends on the farm where we were for lockdown, basically. That's, um, that brings the end of the camping portion of the overlanding trip. I um, hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe. Uh, we've had an absolute blast making it. Unbelievable sightings. What an incredible place Kruger is. So we are going on a Christmas drive to celebrate the end of our Kruger trip with my mom and my sister. So we're at Skakuza, it was my mom and my sister's last night, last night. As you can see I got slightly puffy eyes because we had a couple of bottles of wine. But I set up my desk over there this morning um, on the edge of our chalet. And I was working and I just noticed that I kept on seeing these uh, green wood hoopoos. And um, I wasn't sure what was going on and why they were around the area the whole time. And then I noticed that there was chirping. It comes on right now actually. I noticed there's chirping coming from the tree and they've got a nest in the tree right there. It's very low, it's not a very safe place to have a nest, so I'm guessing that they probably made it during lockdown. But I'm taking the opportunity to try to get some really cool shots because normally birds like this move so much that it's almost impossible to get a really good shot unless you've got like a David Attenborough budget. But because I know exactly where they're going to be coming, I can now set up the camera and I'm using the remote viewer on the cell phone and when I see them flying in, I can turn it on and I can hopefully get some really cool slow-mo footage of them feeding the baby through the hole in the tree. But whole times it works out. Shame, they're really scared about me. You can actually hear the babies. Yeah. 
in the tree there. So I got a shot, but um, not a not a great shot. I think the camera being so close is disturbing them and pre preventing them from coming in. So I'm gonna try to stick a longer lens on the camera so that it can be further away from the nest. And let's see if we can get another one, because that was beautiful, but um, the, the adult bird actually flew away before having fed the babies. So A, I'm interfering, which I don't really want to do. Um, and B, you know, I'm preventing them from doing what they're meant to be doing. So let's, let's stick a long lens on here and see if we can get another shot of it. It's a very rainy day in Skakuza today, as you can see. Um, the temperature's finally broken. It's been in the 40 degrees for the last week. Okay, so I've got the camera set up with the longer lens. Um, I've also grabbed my Nikon D850, which is my old camera, which Bianca's been using on this trip, but it's an incredible stills camera. And this is actually my most expensive lens. Um, it's a 500 millimeter f4. Um, so I'm gonna get some stills as well, hopefully. And then the camera is set up, pointed at the tree a little bit further away. Birds haven't been back in a while, but I can still hear them. They're actually, slang name is Kakalar. There's, the one just flew in, um, cause they, of the noise that they make. So I can still hear them in the area. Um, let's, let's hope I can get the shot. So one of the parent birds actually just flew right into the nest. Here comes another one. Let's see if it does it again. I'm definitely getting the shot. It's freaking amazing. I'm just trying to get some better stills now. And this is in the rest camp. Um, there's so much wildlife in Kruger. You can actually probably do a full-on game drive in the rest camp. There's Jabari in the back. Oh, look, the bird's back in the tree. See the little baby bird sticking his head out the hole there. It's quite a big baby, it's probably getting ready to leave the nest. Um, and it's demanding a lot of food from its parents. And this is in Skakuza, this is one of the busiest rest camps. Not one of the busiest rest camps, this is the busiest rest camp. is where the headquarters for all the wildlife services are, for all the sand parks people, for all the state vets, everything. But the, the wildlife still really prospers in it. Um, it's quite amazing. Really special little experience this morning, I think. Uh, a bit different to the usual. I hope you guys enjoyed it. busy leaving Skakuza which is not that unusual but for us it's pretty unusual because um, we're leaving Skakuza and we won't be back until we don't know when <laughs> which I think occurs with most people normally but we've been in the park for so long and uh, we've always known that Skakuza will be one of our last stops so it's really strange we're leaving, leaving Skakuza now heading up north on our way back up to Limpopo
You gotta love the fridges and cages in Kruger. And this is our Lani accommodation. <laughs> So unfortunately, all good things come to an end. It is our last night in Kruger Park. After seven weeks, we are gonna stay in Early Funds tonight. We're, we're in one of the rondavals. I don't know why Bianca's hiding behind me. Um, and it's a really beautiful spot to end the trip. Unfortunately, we're meant to be staying in Shigwizi tomorrow night, but I have cracked one of my molars like a genius. So we have to rush to the dentist tomorrow and we're gonna miss one night of the trip. But still seven weeks in the park. It's been absolutely incredible. Couldn't recommend it highly enough. Um, I hope that life takes us to a place where we're able to spend two months in Kruger again because it's it's been amazing. Um, I don't have enough words to even describe it. I'm a little bit speechless right now. It's a beautiful spot to end it as well in Olifants, overlooking the Olifants River and the plains of Kruger in the background. It's just incredible. This place is amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed the journey and if you did hit subscribe we're hoping to go back up africa next year but we'll see how things pan out Join us next week for the first episode of Lost in Mozambique.